page 30 of the WPATH files, Dismantling Guardrails. This is Hughes's language. WPATH's aversion to caution and dislike of psychiatric gatekeeping is evident in the files. In an undated thread, a psychotherapist expressed her dissatisfaction with the group regarding a surgeon's requirement of two referral letters from her before amputating the healthy breasts of a 17-year-old girl. To the, to the psychotherapist, this seemed like extra, extra gatekeeping. The letters appear to be little more than a formality for insurance purposes, but in the replies, a therapist suggested the reason could be that the insurance company wanted evidence that the, quote, status of the client had not changed over time. However, the rest of the replies are a chorus of agreement that the request is unnecessary gatekeeping, with one even suggesting reporting the insurer to the local state regulator, quote, for their clinically unsound coverage determination requirements, end quote. A Florida non-binary counselor with they-them pronouns replied, offering her services. She told the therapist that she provides consultation specifically regarding letter writing. Quote, if you're interested in consultation with a provider of lived experience, I'm happy to chat further, said the counselor. I've written quite a few second letters, and I've written letters for minors as well, she added. So here we have um, the financial incentives. Um, this is, it's, it's not just the pharmaceutical companies that are making um, customers for life by uh, in encouraging people, uh, you know, the, the puberty blockers aren't for life, but the cross-sex hormones are. And then if they go into surgery, they have a bunch more drugs that they're gonna be on for life. Um, but there's a whole cottage industry around what is going on here, where you've got a Florida non-binary counselor with they, them pronouns, uh, who knows what their background is. They presumably don't need to know anything. They probably don't actually need to have jumped through any hoops, legitimate or not, in order to present themselves as, I will write that second letter. If what you need is a second letter in order to get a surgeon to sign off on chopping off the healthy breasts of a 17 year old. Yeah, I mean, so much of this verges into the question of sophistry it's like a sophistry industry where an individual can plant themselves in the position of writing quote unquote second letters let's suppose 99 out of 100 clinicians think it would be absurd to chop this person's breasts off um, because there's nothing about their psychological state that suggests that that's going to make them better off yep. and one person has decided i'm the person who believes wholeheartedly in this and i will write those second letters the point is that what they're doing has nothing to do with the patient and i don't i don't think there's any reason to suspect that the people writing those letters need to believe wholeheartedly in anything except their own income right like you, you're not you're not going to write these letters for free you're going to charge for them and uh, you needn't wholeheartedly believe in anything at all in order to put, you know, hang out a shingle that says we'll write second letters in order to get your, you know, the kid's breasts cut off. Yeah. It, it, all, all it takes is willingness to engage in barbarism, to and, facilitate barbarism. And if you allow a system like this to exist, the chances that there's somebody defective enough to do the job of becoming a full-time second letter writer uh, in exchange for money, what are the chances that in a you know a cohort of professionals that somebody will be uh, sociopathic enough to decide right. that that's a good way to make a living? It's easy. The letters are all the same. You swap in you know yeah. some stuff into some boilerplate, and voila, it's a you know it's a pretty good racket. Somebody pretty good will, income stream. Yeah, somebody will adopt that racket, and so the fact of there being a second letter means nothing. Right. Um, literally nothing. Right. Again, Mia Hughes analyzing the WPATH files. Also in May 2023, a gynecologist in the WPATH forum described a patient who, after penile inversion vaginoplasty, was leaking prostate secretions through the urethra and was finding it bothersome. The replies informed the gynecologist that there is no remedy, but one nursing lecturer, who self-described as, quote, a woman of trans experience, end quote, suggested telling the distressed patient to enjoy the ride, adding, it's the ultimate physical sign of orgasm. What's not to like? This is what is in mostly is in is in these files, and we're not going to spend a ton of time here. But the fact that internally between them, the WPATH clinicians are discussing the the pain and agony associated with exactly the interventions that they are pushing on on people. 
both both young people and adults. Um, but publicly declare that the rates of regret are almost zero, uh, that these surgeries are successful, uh, reveals a lack of ethics that is astounding, utterly astounding. A lack of human decency, in fact, yeah. because these patients walk in at a massive disadvantage in terms of knowing the reality of what they are contemplating. And increasingly informed consent is the central question of at least all of medicine. That's something we yes. agreed on so completely that as we pointed out before, seven doctors were hanged in the aftermath of World War II for having violated patients' informed consent even before informed consent was codified as a principle. So yes. this is something we have taken very seriously. And somebody has persuaded us to abandon it en masse across many different domains, things as deeply separated as mRNA transfection shots for COVID and gender transition surgery for children, mm -hmm. right? I mean, for children, an elective surgery that derives from a radical interpretation of the evidence that a person... Uh, that there that there would be regularly people who are enough close enough to born in the wrong body that surgical intervention, which cannot possibly make them more functional than they were, could possibly be the right thing for them. So this, you know, if there's ever a case for informed consent, it would be this. Yes. Now, my question is why? Well, I know why. But in a rational civilization that became convinced that this was necessary, would you not have a entity inside of government whose purpose was to evaluate whether informed consent was being adhered to across the board in medicine? That's one thing you would have. And the other thing you would have is you would have testing for people who were facing testing that did not come from the people who are pushing these surgeries, testing of patients for how much they comprehend about the actual realities of what happens to people who have gone through this surgery. Are you aware of these side effects? Are you aware at the rate that they show up? Are you aware of the rate at which people regret transition? Are you aware that you are forever forgoing your ability to produce children? Are you aware of the sexual dysfunction that is likely to derive from this, et cetera, et cetera? You would have an independent evaluation and a patient, I mean. One of the things that the WPATH files reveals is that the doctors themselves understand that the patients can't possibly be aware when they are young. Yeah, the doctors are aware of this. Therefore, the doctors in not correcting for this are guilty of a wicked violation of informed consent. This is not right. inadequate information. This is an obscuring of information that these people vitally need to know. There's a paper that I couldn't get the entire version of, so I'm not I'm not going to spend time on it here, but you know, published peer-reviewed paper uh, from some years back, uh, which actually invokes the principle of subsidiarity, the Catholic principle of subsidiarity as a justification for always trusting the child client over their parents who say, no, my child is not trans, you should not do this. So that is an abuse of subsidiarity in the most extreme form, in the way that sometimes people will abuse um, Jefferson's uh, claim that the government that governs best governs least, mm. right? Jefferson obviously was not advocating for no government, right? Right. You, you have to just know a, very little about the man to know that that's not yeah. what he was saying. What he was saying is the lightest hand possible to accomplish the goal is the right thing. Mm -hmm. But in this way, subsidiarity means that everything should be governed at the lowest effective level. And what they've effectively done is decided that the lowest effective level is the kid who's demanding a sex change surgery um, rather than the parent who's trying to protect the kid because the kid doesn't know well enough, right? This is a violation of subsidiarity. 